Hello viewers and welcome to another match of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today we have the fourth game of a total of eight filmed during a Russian Meta Store Championship. To the left we see Andreshke Kotilov playing as Packmaster Kith, while to the right as ever piloting Eldrath Starbane we have Klim Petirov. Planet 1 at the top of our screen is Taurus, the unit count based reward planet, and Initiative is in control of Dark Eldar. Kith's first deploy action is to toss out a copy of Void Pirate to planet number 3. For the cost of 1, it's got a command icon and, much more importantly, a plus 1 card bonus. On Eldar's side of the table at planet number 1, we see a copy of the signature Starbane's Council. For the cost of 3, it's a 3-3. Three, three. It's got a command icon of its own, and considering Eldrath does not naturally possess the initiative token, if the enemy unit at that planet attacks, if it's left exhausted or otherwise, if Eldrath forces it to exhaust, the Starbane's Council, upon attacking an already exhausted target, does so at a plus two attack value bonus for a potential modified total of five. Granted, it's rather obscured by glare, but that's a copy of Slith Mercenary played by Kith to planet number one. It's a one cost, two command icon, two two that either player can purchase control of for the paltry investment of just two resources. Looks like Eldrath has got one hell of an economy going already because at planets two and four, Eldrath drops off copies of Slith Mercenary of his own, and further at planets three and five, we've got two copies of Beal Tan Guardians. So one cost, two command icons, one one, and uh, they've got the warrior trait. So definitely be cognizant of some two-cost ambush attachment shuriken catapults. Uh, also at planet number one, which is uh, Eldrath's destination to be commit, that's a Psyker army unit at that planet, so be wary of mind war. Kith dissimilarly arrives at planet number three to flip command and ensure that she's going to be able to collect that card bonus. Let's be on the lookout for superiority, since we've got Dark Eldar and Eldar fighting amongst one another. At planet number one, Eldrath is going to end up winning a card in a resource. Planet number two, Eldrath is going to win two resources. Planet number three, Kith is going to get a resource and two cards. Planet number four is going to be a couple of resources for Eldrath, and planet number five is going to be a card and a resource for Eldrath. Behold the power of those two command icon units most definitely. So... Planet number one, Eldrath arrived, exhausted that copy of Slith Mercenary, Starbane Council, took a swing, that's five points of damage resulting in the destruction of uh, that Slith Mercenary at that planet. It's going to be a red and a green icon added to Eldrath's victory display at planet number three. That's going to be a decimated copy of Beeld Hand Guardians, that Chimera token certainly made short work of it, uh, so that's going to be dead. Planum is going to be activated, that's going to be the Chimera token that did the killing of that warrior trait one cost army unit relocated to our now planet number one as our players move through an HQ phase. Our initiative token changes possession. It's now in uh, Eldrath's Eldar hands. Both of our players have gotten two additional cards. They've come across four resources and uh, both of our players have quite the pile of resource tokens indeed. So Eldrath, he's going to be uh, the person with the first deploy action. He drops off a copy of Warlock Destruction at planet number one. Uh, Warlock Destructor is going to be a two cost, one command icon, three, four. You've got to pay one resource as upkeep during the following round's deploy phase. Uh, but of course, as I always say, if the Warlock Destructor ends up dying during combat, then all you're really left with is an incredibly efficient uh, and valuable unit. At planet number two, we've got a loyal Dark Eldar army unit. It's going to be a copy of Murder of Razor Wings. So that is a forced random card discarded from Eldrath's hand. Looks like that was a third copy of Slith Mercenary that Eldrath discarded. And uh, the Razor Wings themselves are just a uh, rather weak one cost one one. So absolutely nothing special whatsoever about that unit. Played opposite the uh, Murder of Razor Wings, we've got one of the Warlord friends. It is the Blood 
bloodied reavers so it's a two cost vehicle trait unit no war gear eligibility whatsoever right there but it's potentially swinging for two in the presence of a warlord and uh regardless it's got uh, two hp but we've now got a warlock destructor played at uh, planet number two this time by kith and again it's going to be that uh, unit relocation effect that's on the line we've now got a eldarath played warlock destructor at planet number two bear in mind planet number one is going to be osis for the green steal a resource planet which does definitely potentially feed into a very early victory condition for eldarath if he were to pick up planets one and two he'd end up winning through green strong point type icons but if kith denies him then a uh, victory through green is not going to become possible again until our new planet number five which is iridial the healing planet both of our players drop off yet another copy of a uh, bloodied reavers at planet number two and it looks like uh, that vehicle trait unit is going to send both of these uh, players here quickly on the highway to the danger zone indeed because this is just looking to be ridiculous uh, kith purchases control of the uh, slith mercenary there at three and doesn't that about suck for eldrath because uh, the purchase of that slith mercenary is going to result in kith winning two resources that eldrath would have uh, otherwise won so that's eldrath losing a unit and losing a the win of that command struggle. So I definitely would not be surprised whatsoever to see Eldarath skip planet number one. Looks like a 3-4 destructor and a 2-2 uh, copy of Slith Mercenaries is presumably going to be able to surmount that paltry 2-1 creature trait Chimera token, uh, but I could potentially expect Kith and Eldarath both uh, to be showing up to planet number two. What's uh, particularly interesting is I believe both of our our players have only got three command icons at planet number two. So if warlords arrive, then that's, uh, well, I guess that is not the case, so let me go ahead and cut myself off right there. Kith arrives at planet number one, Eldarath shows up at planet number two, that's going to be a copy of Warlock Destructor Exhausted, that's going to be a Chimera token generated at planet number one. Uh, planet number one, by the way, is going to be a couple of resources for Kith, planet number two is going to be a resource and a card for Eldarath Starbane, planet number three is going to be a couple of resources for... Uh, Packmaster Kith in planet number four, thanks to the two command icons associated with that Beel 10 Guardians incredible value unit right there, that loyal to the Eldar uh, army. Uh, anyways, it's going to be a card and a resource for Eldarath, and it prevents Kith from getting a, a couple of cards and one resource. So at planet number one, unfortunately, our Packmaster is located uh, currently off the screen, uh, but I can only imagine that she is potentially, having stolen initiative, going to be... Uh, uh, the first and foremost attacker there. So we'll have to keep a lookout for shield cards. Kith is going to be at that dangerous threshold of four resources, which means we could see a double Archon's Terror. We could see a single Clavex War Leader, uh, the nightmare of really any player going up against Packmaster Kith. Uh, unfortunately, we've now got a Warlock Destructor also off the screen. We see a Shadow move, so I can only imagine that's going to be two points of damage on that Warlock Destructor. Do we have a Clavex War Leader in hand or not? I suppose only time will tell. Uh, we see the Slith Mercenary is going to be not actually taking a swing. So what all is going to be occurring? If we do see an Archon's Terror, Eldrath is quite ready as a unique Eldar faction unit uh, to use Nullify. So that's going to be Slith Mercenary attacking a Chimera token. That Chimera token is going to be outright destroyed. Again, my sincerest apologies for... Uh, the fact that some of these cards are off screen, we see a Chimera attack thwarted by the signature attachment, the zero cost mobility discarded by Eldarath. So now uh, an attached army unit is no longer going to be gaining the mobile keyword. And we've now... Um let us see there. Uh, I believe that was an Archon's Terror. Yes, so that was an Archon's Terror removing that Warlock Destructor from the planet, presumably prior to it having the opportunity to attack. We come to the end of the combat round, and that's going to be that Slith Mercenary retreating from that planet, and that is going to be one resource token one uh, by Packmaster Kith. Uh, normally, I'd raise a bit more of a fuss about some glare and some cards being off screen, but damn it, I love 
love our Russian community, so uh, I'd like to commentate as many of their games as is humanly possible. So, uh, at planet number two, we've now got an attack on going. That's going to be the Bloodied Reavers under the employ of Eldrath taking a swing at the Bloodied Reavers controlled by Packmaster Kith. It's brother versus brother or sister versus sister at that planet or whatever their gender identity happens to be. We saw Agonizer of Bren discarded as a shield, so four is going to be reduced to a mere one, which means that the Bloodied Reavers does happen to exist. Uh, we've got Kith having bounced back to that HQ there. That is going to be a copy of Starbeam's Council outright destroyed uh, by, I believe that was a copy of Warlock Destructor. Warlock Destructor, controlled by Eldrath, swings, and that's going to be a killed uh, copy of what I believe was Slith Mercenaries, Bloodied Reavers from Eldrath, swings. Uh, that is a dead Warlock Destructor. Eldrath is going to deliver an attack, and that is a dead Bloodied Reavers. There's no more than that Void Pirate left at that planet. We're going to come to the end of the combat round, and it's going to have an opportunity to retreat, and... Uh, that is going to be a battle won by Eldorath, but what's kind of tricky about that is Packmaster Kith currently has one green strong point type icon. Uh, Eldorath only has a red and a green, so if Eldorath is going to end up winning our uh, currently first planet, Eldorath is going to have to win something like planet 4 to get another green strong point type icon, or uh, otherwise go for like red icons. So planets 1, three, and four. We've gone through another HQ phase. That's going to be two cards and four resources for each of our players here, and now we're waiting to see some deploy actions. We've got a copy of the Aleatok Shrine uh, adorning Eldrath's HQ. I believe that's a one-cost signature support. Whenever an Eldar faction unit moves to a planet, whether it's from HQ, whether it's from another planet, you can exhaust that support in order to ready it, uh, so uh, it's good for units coming from from your, uh, you know, HQ, like, uh, for instance, that Warlock Destructor, which we've seen a resource, um used to pay the upkeep for. We've got another purchased copy of Slith Mercenary, and it looks like those are just changing sides in droves. Uh, very, very much a traitor unit there, but I believe that's the second uh, instance of that unit that Packmaster Kith has uh, been able to bribe over to her side. Who knows what, uh, you know, Dark Eldar delights that uh, she's potentially promised uh, those mercenaries, whether it's uh, monetary recompense or whether it's some sort of other, you know, debauchery or depravity or whatever. Uh, but Kith's Chimera Masters are now positioned strategically at our planet number five, Karnath, the wild card planet, last planet to be seen of this game. They generate a Chimera token, and for the cost of two, they're a one-two uh, with a command icon, and they themselves are warriors. So again, be on the lookout for those shuriken catapults. Kith arrives at planet number three. Eldrath arrives at planet number two, and uh, we see yet another Chimera token being created and uh, let's go ahead and see. Planet number one is going to be a card and a resource for Eldrath. Planet number two is going to be a couple of resources won by Eldrath. Looks like, unfortunately, he's going to end up slaughtering a lot of his uh, uh, formerly employed Slith mercenaries. Planet number three is going to be a resource in two cards. Uh, sorry, three cards earned by Packmaster Kith because of that pair of Void Pirates, although, you know, it doesn't matter that one is exhausted. And then at planet number five, entirely uncontested, Kith earns a card and a resource. Or so, what have we got going on for combats? It's going to be battles at planets 1, 2, and 3. Uh, looks like Eldrath is going to have the luxury of moving a unit from planet 1, or even 2, to whatever planet, like uh, that copy of the... Uh, bloodied Reavers could go to Kith's planet, but the problem there is Kith has initiative. Kith also has a sufficient number of resources with which to use uh, Nullify. So, okay, Eldrath ends up uh, moving a Warlock. No, maybe not. Uh, war okay, yep, that is going to be the case. So Warlock Destructor is going to be repositioned to planet number three. It's definitely got a more durable carapace associated with it than does a 2-2 Bloodied Reavers. Uh, looks like Eldrath ends up winning that planet. 
I'm not going off of a piece of paper, but my memory indicates that it's going to be two green icons, one red and one blue in Eldrass victory display. Uh, Kith is, of course, in that scary uh, threshold of having f more than three resources, so that means uh, that we could see uh, something along the lines of Clavex War Leader or Archon's Terror help Kith deal with the, the Warlock Destructor at that planet. Interestingly enough, after the Warlock Destructor that was ready by a Laetok Shrine kills a ready copy of Slith Mercenary, we see that Clavex War Leader drop into play. Uh, this is even after Eldrath dealt a point of damage to the exhausted copy of Slith Mercenary. Clavex War Leader, for the cost of four, has a fantastic reaction. Uh, it, of course, destroys a damaged army unit at the same planet, so that's going to be a dead Warlock Destructor. Gift of Isha is going to be played by Eldrath. That's going to be a resurrected copy of Warlock Destructor. The Clavex War Leader is dealt three points of damage to Eldrath, um, that Warlock Destructor was only able to deal one puny little paltry point of damage to the Clavex War Leader thanks to the discard of a two-value shield card. I don't know if it was Suffering or something else. At the end of the combat round, Farin is going to be uh, vacated by Kith-controlled units, and uh, that route looks like it removed a Chimera token, so Kith takes a swing at planet number, I believe this is planet number three, we see a same Han Jet Bike discarded as a shield to preserve the fragile viscera of that Bealtan Guardians. That's going to be a Warlock Destructor dealing a potentially devastating blow directed straight toward our Packmaster. Packmaster Kith is sitting at three points of damage. The planet currently under contest is going to be Aatrox Prime, the planetary bombardment planet. So, if Kith retreats, then the lives of those Void Pirates are potentially forfeit, and that's going to be a Slith Mercenary, Chimera Token, and Clavex Warleader all being hit for a single point of damage, and my dear ladies and gentlemen, it looks like that is exactly what is ongoing right now. So, that's going to be a dead Slith Mercenary return to Eldrath's discard pile, that Clavex Warleader's got two points of damage, that's going to be another, well, I guess, uh, appropriately discard pile put a uh, copy of Slith Mercenary, that Warlock Destructor eh, leaves play at the end of the combat round because Gift of Isha is an ephemeral resurrection, so hopefully Warlock Destructor did everything it was hoping to throughout the course of its uh, temporarily return to life existence. Uh, that Clavex War Leader, I believe, is sitting at two points of damage, and that was two dead uh, Void Pirates as well as a dead Chimera token. So I believe Initiative is once again in possession of the Eldar, and uh, now what exactly are we going to be seeing? There's new, no new planet. Kith has only won a single green strong point type icon. That was another murder of razor wings at planet number one. That's going to be a randomly uh, discarded copy of Subduel, which you can use to put attachments or supports on top of their owner's deck, albeit for the ridiculous cost of two resources. I definitely cannot advise my dear viewers to use that card anytime soon, in our current meta at least. But what do I know? I'm just a, a try-hard, you know, guy who talks too much. Uh, same Han jet bike is now equipped by the Warlock Destructor at planet number one. Uh, Kith drops off a copy of her own Murder of Razor Wings at planet number one. Kith has just got a green strong point icon in her victory display, while rather dissimilarly, Eldrath has got two green, one red, and one blue. So Kith is uh, basically still up in the air. If Kith wins three out of the four remaining planets, then that is going to be the game won by Kith, and it looks like Eldrath Eldrath is starting to come back into this one. That economy at first was so, so strong for Eldar, and then it looks like Dark Eldar was kind of taking control, and now it looks like Eldrath may end up back in the driver's seat. Eldrath has got a couple of resources. Uh, it's at least a copy of Bloodied Reavers, if not two, in Eldrath's HQ, so Eldrath is definitely going to have his movement rather constricted, uh, owing to the presence of that pair of army units. Both of our players are deciding where exactly they want to send their respective warlords. Packmaster Kith has only got two HP remaining. Eldrath has got four HP remaining. Kith shows up at planet number four. She's going to end up generating a Chimera token, and at planet number one, that is going to be a 
an exhausted copy of Warlock Destructor thanks to the presence of Eldrath at that planet. Eldrath picks up a couple of resources from planet number one. Aatrox Prime is going to be a card and a resource for Eldrath. Planet number four is just going to be a card and a resource for Packmaster Kith. That uh, bombardment from uh, Aatrox Prime last round was uh, devastatingly effective. So I believe that's a pair of bloodied reavers accompanying Eldrath from that planet. Again, I definitely have to apologize for the glare in this video, uh, but I would imagine some units are going to be dying relatively quickly, so it's probably not going to be uh, an issue for long. Warlock Destructor swings and a kill. That is Slith Mercenary gone. Murder of Razor Wings is going to deal a single point of damage to that Warlock Destructor, but that means it's potentially going to be set up in the future for Murder of Razor Wings to annihilate it. Uh, I believe that was Eldrath who dealt the devastating killing blow to knock the Murder of Razor Wings from the sky. Perhaps he eradicated them with his, uh, psychic lightning there. Looks like Kith is gonna have her Warlock Destructor hang out at that planet. And uh, that is indeed going to be a couple of copies of Bloodied Reavers. Eldrath is going to be possessing initiative, and no, at the end of the combat round, that Warlock Destructor retreats. And that means that Warlock Destructor is going to live to fight another day. That is going to be a red material type icon shortly added to uh, the victory display of Eldrath. And before we see that battle ability triggered, the Warlock Destructor is going to be relocated from planet 1 to planet number 4 by the same Han jet bike, a red, like it moves from a red planet to a planet that matches uh, the same type. And, uh, that is ending up going to be the, uh, anyways, it was the Clavex Warleader that was, uh, dealt a point of damage from the jet bike. I believe we saw superiority used as a shield. Farin is going to be added to Eldrath's victory display, and that is going to be a Chimera token routed. So, the Warlock Destructor takes a hit from Packmaster Kith. Now it's going to take a swing. That is going to be three directed toward Packmaster Kith. That, I believe, was a copy of Shadowfield. So, that's just going to be one more point of damage dealt out to Packmaster Kith, but she is very, very much in danger of potentially being bloodied. She's only got one hit point remaining, and had Kith not had a two-value shield card in hand, that would have uh, indeed been a bloodying of our Packmaster, so we are going to see that Warlock Destructor killed by a Chimera token. Goodbye, Warlock Destructor. Goodbye, same Han jet bike. But now what sucks is uh, this next planet. Uh, like, first of all, let's go through our HQ motions. Initiative token bounces over to Packmaster Kith. That's going to be four resources and two cards earned by both of our players. And now, our first planet, Aatrox Prime, that is going to be the victory condition for uh, Eldrath Starbane. So unless I've heinously lost count, that's going to be two red material type icons in Eldrath's victory display, one blue and two green. So, uh, Taurus plus Farin means two red, and uh, therefore if Eldrath manages to pull this off, then that is going to be a victory for Eldar at planet number one. So, what can Packmaster Kith do to stave off Eldar winning the game? I believe that Kith has at this point only managed to win that one strong point icon possessing planet, although I could certainly be wrong, and I have to confess I forget which player uh, won Planum, so my sincerest apologies for not going into this with notes, uh, but let us see what occurs, and by notes I mean notes that I take mid-commentary, I don't pre-watch these prior to recording, otherwise I wouldn't sound like uh, such a dumbass right now. But let us see what we've still got left to occur. Both of our players have still got a fair few resources. They've still got some cards, so we can see plenty more deploy actions. Looks like both of our players have passed. So for Eldar, maybe we've got some additional copies of Gift of Isha. We've yet to see any Archon's Terror. We could potentially see an additional copy of... um. Clavex War Leader. I cannot quite tell what the unit is that is obscured by glare, but at planet number one, it's looking like that is going to be a card in a resource one by Eldrath. Planet number two, which has picked up a copy of the one cost, one resource uh, bonus, uh, one command icon, Rogue Trader. That's going to be a card in a resource for Eldrath. And then all the way down at planet number three, that is going to be a card in a resource one uh, by Packmaster Kith. But unfortunately for her, uh, that 
that's going to be a significant number of combat competent or capable units stranded at that victory irrelevant planet. Kith does happen to possess four resources, which is that threshold for being able to drop a Clavex war leader into play. So let's see if that warlock destructor ends up being damaged by this swing of Packmaster Kith, or if otherwise she's going for a different target. What exactly are we going to see right here? So, does Eldorath have a two shield value card in hand? I feel like it's all gonna come down to this. Do we have a shield or do we not? Perhaps Klim stepped briefly away from the table. Uh, that is going to be two points of damage on that Warlock Destructor. So are we going to see that copy of Clavax War Leader? Yes, we are. Four resources spent. That Warlock Destructor is going to be outright slain. And uh, Eldrath had better hope to High Hell or Holy Terra, although that would be a weird thing for an Eldar to do that he's got one or more copies of Gift of Isha in hand. Bealtan Guardians takes a swing, does not manage to kill a copy of Chimera Token thanks to the copy of Promotion intervening there. And now, what exactly are we going to see? It's going to be our Dark Eldar player's opportunity to attack. We've got that unit obscured by Glare. We've also got a copy of Clavex Warleader. Eldrath has got uh, his Warlord unit with 3 HP remaining. There's that Bealtan Guardians and there are also two copies of Bloody Reavers, which are potentially going to be able to attack for four. We see a Chimera token manage to kill that Bealtan Guardian, so it's outright slain. Uh, they are Shuriken Catapult eligible, and the Bloodied Reavers are not. Looks like Eldorath is going to be taking a swing, but directed at what? We've got a copy of what looked to be Suffering discarded as a shield, presumably to preserve either Packmaster Kith or a Chimera token. It uh, scarcely matters at this point. Kith's Chimera Masters dote a damage token lovingly upon Eldorath. That means they're going to be at uh, he is going to be at 2 HP remaining. Clavax War Leader takes a swing. We see same Han Jetbike discarded, and now Eldorath is going to be a uh, at uh, one more, sorry, just one HP remaining. We come to the end of the combat round. That's going to be Eldorath retreating from that planet. Those bloodied Reavers are going to be staying. Warlock Destructor takes a swing. That's going to be a dead copy of bloodied Reavers. Kith also retreated from that planet. That is a dead Chimera token. That 2-2 two -two swung, killed a token. A Chimera token destroys, kills that uh, copy of the Chimera token there. Uh, we saw a nullify discarded as a shield, and it looks like that is going... Oh, sorry, Nullify was discarded as a shield to prevent Eldrath from being bloodied. So, Packmaster Kith ended up capturing Aatrox Prime. That was going to be a red and a blue icon added to her victory display, and once again, it's all going to come down to our current final planet, so I am not exactly surprised that Packmaster Kith was able to successfully defend our planet there, uh, but now that is a mountain, just a giant stockpile of resources in the uh, control of our Eldorath player, and Kith is going to have a ton of units arriving at planet number one exhausted. Looks like our unit that had been obscured by Glare is going to be a copy of the Chimera Master. Eldorath is only at one HP, and the same thing can be said for Packmaster Kith. When both of those warlords end up showing up at planet number one, Kith is going to generate another Chimera token, and uh, Eldrath, dissimilarly, is going to have the opportunity to exhaust an enemy unit. So having moved through another HQ phase, that's going to be four resources and two cards for either of our players. Kith is going to spend a couple of resources and a copy of the unique support, Archon's Palace. Whenever your opponent wins a command struggle, you pick either the card or resource bonus associated with that planet, including any and all modifiers, and you basically nullify it or negate it entirely. At planet number one, getting ready for for the impending Dark Eldar Hordes, the imminently upcoming hordes. We've got a copy of Starbane's Council, so it's a 3-3. It's going to have plenty of exhausted units to attack. We've also got a copy of the three-cost unique Corset Loyal Army Unit for the Eldar Spirit Seer Aerithal. So he's a Psyker. He can use Mind War for the cost of one to exhaust a non-elite enemy army unit at the same planet. He himself is a 2-3, and upon being declared an attacker, you can pull a point of damage off of a friendly unit. And of course, the perfect 
perfect contender for that would be Eldrath Starbane. So Eldrath is potentially going to win a card and a resource at planet number one, but I can only imagine that Eldrath Starbane shuts off that uh, card bonus. Uh, that is going to be uh, Spirit Seer Aerithal bloodying Packmaster Kith because Eldrath has initiative. Uh, that's going to be, an, uh, well, I guess maybe an erroneously exhausted Chimera token or otherwise, well, no, never mind. Anyways, point being, Starbane's Council takes a swing. The Clavax War Leader is going to be killed. Uh, we saw a point of damage pulled off of Eldrath Starbane thanks to Spirit Seer Aerithal. Uh, we've got another point of outgoing damage directed from Eldrath toward a Chimera token. We saw a shield card discarded to preserve uh, the fragile Chimera tokens there. We come to the end of a combat round, so it's going to be Eldrath, a Starbane's Council, and a copy of Spirit Seer Aerithal. Eldrath has got initiative, and I've never seen Spirit Seer Aerithal do so much work. Aerithal is going to be attacking a unit. Looks like, though, it's off screen. That's going to be a dead Chimera token, so there's going to be a Warlock Destructor swinging at the Starbane's Council. Promotion means that it is not destroyed, and now the Council is going to be able to swing in response at that Warlock Destructor for an unmitigated sum of five, unless we've got a shield card with a value of two used by Packmaster Kith to uh, maintain the sanctity of that unit. No, looks like it's infiltrated by uh, the Council. That is going to be a dead Warlock Destructor. Chimera Master takes a swing. That is going to be a dead Starbane's Council. Earlier, I was going to say that, okay, let me finish this game, okay, there we go, so Gift of Isha would have been able to recur that copy of Starbane's Council to play, and it looks like that is going to be the GG right there, so congratulations to Klim Petrov for managing to win this one, but all the same, a very well played game by Andrei Shkikotilov, all the same, so it ended up making for one hell of a match, it was uh, definitely a bit of a spectacle, what I was going to say with the uh, L Wrath and Packmaster Kith reaction timing thing is uh, when you've got both players attempting to trigger a reaction, it's going to be the player with initiative having the opportunity to trigger their reaction first. Eldrath could have uh, said no thank you on his taking a reaction, and then Kith sh uh, could have said yes, I'd like my Chimera token. That would have given Eldrath another opportunity to exhaust a target enemy unit at that planet, and uh, wouldn't you know it, it turned out that that was that Chimera token. So, in the end, it looks like Packmaster Kith narrowly managed to lose this one, but it's never, uh, never a bad thing to see the Eldar manage to triumph over the Dark Eldar, and even without the assistance of drone defense systems. So, again, a very well played game by Klim, and uh, thank you again to our Russian community, and of course, Anton Elizarov, the gentleman whom affords me the opportunity to spectate these games to commentate these matches, and of course, uh, to subsequently publish them to the Hive Tyrant channel. So, my dear viewers, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. If you are already subscribed, then uh, hit the share button. More people being exposed to Conquest means more people may give this game a try, enjoy what they experience, join our community, and uh, the greater we are in number, the more likely it is that Fantasy Flight Games continues to develop this fantastic product for years and years to come. So, I'm in this for the long haul, my dear viewers, I hope you are as well. Together, let's continue to grow this community. If you ever want to get in touch with me, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, and I would be deeply appreciative and humbled, and uh, I can scarcely express just how much I would be willing to give thanks for anyone kind and generous enough to give even the barest modicum of a contribution to my Patreon, even a dollar or fifty cents donated on a strictly monthly basis, uh, nevertheless does wonders to indicate just how much you care about this channel, and uh, as a starving college student, uh, you know, I'm hugely thankful for uh, absolutely anything I can get. So, as always, thank you so much for watching, and once again, be sure to check back in again soon for much more Conquest LCG content to come.